record. So what is form validation? Uh, to go to any popular site with a registration form and you'll notice they give you feedback when you don't enter your data in the format they're expecting. You'll get a message such as, this field is required, please enter your phone number in this format, please enter a valid email address, and stuff like that. This is called form validation. When you enter data, the web application checks it to see that the data is correct. If correct, the application allows the data to be submitted to the server and saved in the database. If not, it gives you an error message explaining what corrections need to be made. Form validation can be implemented in a number of different ways. So we wanna make filling out web forms as easy as possible. So why do we insist on validating our forms? There's three main reasons. We want to get the data in the right format, so our applications won't work properly if our users' data is stored in the, in the incorrect format, or if they don't enter the correct information or omit information altogether. We want to protect our user accounts by forcing our users to enter secure passwords. It makes it easier to protect their account information. Uh, we want to protect ourselves. There are many ways that malicious user can misuse unprotected forms to damage the application. Uh, so different types of form validation. There are two different types of form validation which you'll encounter. Client-side validation is validation that works in the browser before the data has been submitted to the server. This is more user-friendly than server-side validation as it gives an, an instant response. This can be subdivided into JavaScript validation and built-in validation using HTML5 uh, features. This generally does not require JavaScript. Built-in form validation has better performance, but it is not as customizable. Uh, then you have server-side validation. It is uh, validation which occurs on the server after the data has been submitted. Server-side code is used to validate the data before it's saved into the database. If the data fails authentication, a response is sent back to the client to tell the user what corrections to make. Server-side validation is not as user-friendly as client-side. It does not provide errors until the entire form has been submitted. However, server-side validation is your applicant's last line, application's last line of defense against incorrect or even malicious data. Um, okay. In real world, developers use both so we're using built-in form valid, uh, validation. Um, one of the features of HTML5 is the ability to validate most user data without relying on scripts. This is done by using validation attributes on form elements, which allow you to specify rules for a form input, like whether a value needs to be filled in, the minimum maximum height of the data, whether it needs to be a number, an email address, or something else, and the pattern that it must match. If the entered data follows all those rules, it is considered valid. If not, it is considered invalid. So when an element is valid, the, the element matches the valid CSS pseudo class. This will let you apply a specific style to valid elements. If the user tries to send the data, the browser will submit the form provided there's nothing else stopping it from doing so. So JavaScript. When an element is valid, the sorry, when an element is invalid, the element matches the invalid CSS pseudo class. This will allow you to apply a specific style to invalid elements. If all the users, if the user tries to send the data, the browser will block the form and display an error message. So validation constraints on input elements. Um, in this section, we'll look at some of, different, some of the different HTML features that can be used to validate input elements. Let's start with a simple example. An input element that allows you to choose your favorite fruit out of the choice of banana or cherry. This involves a simple text input with a matching label and a submit button. You can find the source code on GitHub as foodstart.html5 and a live example below.
So to begin with, make a copy of fruit in a new directory on my hard drive. Okay. Is one of your microphones super like staticky? Uh, it's mine. Mute yourself for a sec. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, the static is gone. Okay, I think it was yours. Yeah, it should probably change the server back to where original. This should be better. And then, so, so we're making uh, HTML. Touch. And then Okay. <clears throat> so the required attribute. Uh, the simplest HTML5 validation feature to use is the required attribute. If you want to make an input mandatory, you can mark the element using this attribute. Um, when this attribute is set, the form won't submit and will display an error message when the input is empty. The input will also be considered invalid. So add a required input to your element. So just in the input. Required. And then if you submit. Okay, that makes sense. Also take note, the CSS included in the example file. So if the input is invalid, then you have a border that's red. And if the input is valid, then you have a border that's black. So this is red, type something, turns to black because it's valid. Makes sense. Uh, this causes the input to have a bright red dash border when the input is invalid and a more subtle black border when the input is valid. Try out our new behavior in the example below. Makes sense. Uh, so validating against a regular expression. Another very common validation feature is the pattern attribute, which expects a regular expression as its value. Regular expression or regex is a pattern that can be used to match character combination in a text string. They all they are also are ideal for form validation, uh, as well as a variety of other uses in JavaScript. Regex are quite complex, and we don't tend to teach you them exhaustively in this article. Below are some examples to give you a basic idea of how they work. So A matches one character, that's not B. A, B, C matches A followed by B followed by a C. A star matches the character A. 
zero or more times. So that matches one character, that's not A. Oh, I see, okay. You can use numbers and other characters in these expressions too, such as matches a space or a dash, matches any digit in the range of zero to nine. You can combine these in pretty much any way you want, specifying different parts, one after another. So L1 dot star K, single character that is an upper or lower case L, followed by zero or more characters of any type, followed by a single lowercase K. <clears throat> okay. Are you guys reading the regex examples? Oh, what? Yeah. A to Z. I'm definitely gonna have to come back here once I need to use this. So the dot is any character. Hmm. Oh, I see. <clears throat> yeah, this is definitely going to take some practice to get used to. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's implement an example. So update your HTML to add a pattern attribute like so. So pattern, so this basically does either banana or cherry. And then if we go here, refresh, so if it's a B, Open in wrong. So it's invalid until you either type banana or you type cherry. True. Um, <clears throat> in this example, the input elements accept one of two possible values the string banana or the string cherry. At this point, try changing the value inside the pattern attribute to equal some of the example we saw earlier. You will, you will look at how that affects the values you can enter to make the input value valid. Try writing some of your own and see how you get on. Try to make them fruit related whenever possible. So if I do something like plus, 
plus y and do this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, up next is constraining the length of your entries. AAG, is that you uh, with the static? I don't hear any step. Also, it couldn't be me. I push the talk on. I'm hearing a lot of static. So it might be uh, on your end. Let me turn mine off because I just unmuted mine. No, they're still static. No one's mic sounded up though. That's weird. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, okay, well, anyways. So to constrain the length of your entries. So all text fields created by input or text area can be constrained in size using the min length, max length attributes. A field is invalid. Uh, if its value is shorter than the min length value or longer than the max length. Browsers often don't let users type a value a uh, longer value than expected in text fields anyways but it's useful to have this fine-grained control available for number fields uh, the min and max attributes provide a validation constraint if the field's value is lower than the min attribute or higher than the max attribute the field will be invalid uh, let's look at another example create a new copy of the food start html file uh, now delete the content of the body element and replace it with the following. Uh, save as. And then Okay, so a changed uh, label for choose, would you prefer a banana that stays the same? ID choose label, required min length is six and required mass max length is six. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, true. A uh, label for number, how many would you like? So amount, name is amount. Value one is min. So this puts the value as one, and then min is one, max is 10. I see. Okay. Here you see we've given the text field min length and max length of six. Entering less characters will show as invalid and entering more is not possible. 
Uh, we've also given the number field a min of 1 and a max of 10. Entering numbers outside this range will show as invalid, and you won't be able to use the increment or decrement or decrement arrows to move outside of this range. Uh, so full example. Here's a, full ex here's a full example to show off the usage of HTML's built-in validation features. Hmm. So form, yield set, so length, legend, title. Title is, this field is mandatory. Okay. And we have ABR. Um, ABR legend and then input type radio, required name, title. Oh, this is so it's required. Name is title, ID is R1. Value is, oh. what's wrong? Guys, I'll be right back. Hey guys. Yeah, what's up? Hey, uh, you guys go on without me. I I have to take my dog out real quick. Hey. Okay. I'll uh I'll be back in a sec.